It was Cox first spied her, a little after dawn on December 5th. She was moving in a most strange and erratic manner. As we drew closer and Cox's glass was passed between us, all could see she was adrift. We drew close and hailed her, but there was only silence. The captain called me and Cox and Peg, and we lowered a boat and drew out toward her. The sea was calm, but our minds were not, and Peg's mouth was running off with nerves and fantasies of the horrors we were to find aboard. Drawing near, I saw she was the Mary Celeste. Cox scampered up her side and lowered a rope for us to follow. Aboard there was an eerie stillness. We three stood in silence and could hear only the lap of waves against the hull and the creak of the main shroud. The deck was awash with brine, and as we approached the helm I could see that the wheel was not tied. It wound this way and that as though guided by a spectral hand. For a moment I stood paralysed. Her compass, I noticed, was destroyed, and the sextant and chronometer were nowhere to be seen. The clock was spoiled with water, and the face was inverted as though time aboard the ghost ship was running in reverse. The log's last entry was for November 24th, and gave no indication of what might have followed. My imagination, unlashed from the mast of reason, flapped with wild speculation. Expanse. 